Blessings, and here we are on another Sunday to give God thanks and to bless his name. And in particular, today is special because in the UK, it's Mothering Sunday. So we're grateful uh, to be here and to give God thanks for our mothers on this day. My name's Yvonne Kennedy, and I'm a minister of the Church of God of Prophecy based in the UK. I'm here just to share a word with you today, and I'll be using uh, quite a well-known scripture um, in part of the session. But at the moment, I want to draw our attention to the writings of Isaiah, a well-known prophet of the word of God and used and referred to frequently. In particular, I'll be speaking from Isaiah 26 and verse 20. And it reads, reading from the New King James Version. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. I appreciate also the New Living Translation rendering, which states, come home, my people and lock your doors, hide yourself for a little while until the Lord's anger is past. When we look at this scripture, we see in just a small verse, a lot of detail. We see here that in chapter 26, it focuses really on the future rejoicing of God's people. We see Isaiah giving voice to the praise and the prayers that will go up in thanksgiving to God for delivering his people in this situation, in this particular situation, Israel. He delivers them in the future, it's speaking of here, because the Lord's victory will cause them to prevail over their enemies. And in fact, the Lord's victory will be word worldwide. Just to break it down just a little further, we see verses one to six, where this is the song that uh, the prophet, the hymn that the prophet sings and says that Israel will sing, the redeemed of the Lord, the people of God will sing. We see as we go further that he then goes into a prayer from verse seven to verse 19. The prayer is in two parts. Firstly, a present waiting for the Lord. And then secondly, a future expectation from God. And doesn't that as believers uh, really encapsulate some of our prayers that we pray where we are waiting on the Lord for a move of God in our lives. And then there is a future expectation from him to step in and deliver us. Bless God. And then we come here now to uh, verse 20 of this journey through the through the chapter. The two final verses here, Isaiah is then turning to the people and giving a warning of traumatic times ahead. However, note that there is a word of reassurance and comfort also coming simultaneously. As he says the warning, so there is comfort provided in those words. Doesn't that make us want to look a little further? So the literal meaning is Isaiah was saying that before the restoration of Israel, God's people would experience hard times. And that uh, is also symbolized in our own lives. Sometimes before our greatest opportunity and receipt of revelation, illumination of the word of God, we experience a hard time. We experience even a measure of drought or some circumstance or situation. But thanks be to God, 
revelation is on its way. Revelation comes. And in the same way, deliverance comes when we are in our valleys. The Lord will deliver us. The Lord will redeem us. The Lord will cause his face to shine upon us and give us peace. Even in that time of trauma. This is a word of assurance for us uh, today, a word of comfort that even though God is saying hard times may come ahead, in this case, it was definitely going to come ahead. Never mind. God is with us. The Lord of Jacob is our refuge and our strength. The mighty God will hold us and keep us. Before God opened the gates to the new city, which was the future time that this scripture was talking about. Um, so opening the gates for the redeemed to be at peace and to rejoice. They first needed to shut their doors against their foes. Shutting doors suggests a time of safety from danger, but also separation from others. So what was God really trying to say at this point? Who or what are we separating ourselves from? And who are we shutting ourselves, shutting in with? Who are we going to be with? What's, what's the capacity? What's the reason for coming in? Bless God. Let's look at the verse again. Come home. Come, my people, come home. Home is seen as a place of safety and a place of rest. My people, this term draws us to understanding those who are obedient to God. You are assured, we are assured of his protection. We are assured of the blessing and the covering of his word. Amen. We are assured of that relational experience that we have with God. We are his people. He is our God, our Lord. Bless God. It means that in that, uh, there's so much to in, in, uh, unpack within that. But what it also means is that even the host of heaven is at our aid to ensure that the will of God is performed in our lives. And so we're invited as the people of God to move away from the danger, to move away from that which is distracting and troubling. Come in and lock your doors. In fact, this scripture was used so often at the very onset um, of our lockdowns here in the UK and across the world, to be honest with you, to encourage and to strengthen uh, the people of God. This scripture was quite often used as a word to kind of like give context to what we're going through, to help us to understand that we are not alone. The Lord of hosts is with us. And so he also made us understand that God himself knows every time and every situation. No, nothing that happens to us comes as a surprise to God. He is all seeing, all knowing. He is all powerful. So with that comfort with us, Bless God. We are assured that when we come home to that place of safety, and I understand that for some, home may not be that safe for you. But today, in Jesus' name, there is a peace being offered through the word of God that it doesn't even matter what your literal home situation is within that context. There is a place where you can meet with God. There is a place within that particular home to meet God, 
to be with God. Shut the doors. Shut the doors to confusion. Shut the doors to the destruction of the world, the noise of this world. Sometimes we can feel as though we are going crazy because modern living is so complex and, and, and tiring. My God, it is so difficult. Keeping our jobs sometimes seems so complex and trauma is filling our lives. But today God is saying, shut the doors, shut the doors to those noise. Come in unto me. Have a moment with me, my God even through the times of difficulties that we are facing there is hope my god there is a peace that surpasses all understanding there is a peace that only he god can give through jesus christ and so today i encourage you as the word of god is clearly stating come in come in shut the doors in fact not only shut it lock it you know sometimes we we use the phrase lock it down <laughs> shut it down whatever that distraction your bouts of depression through jesus christ there is peace with god through anxiety frustration through sickness there is still peace with god he is described even as our Lord Jesus has enabled us as well, as the lily of the valley, a dry valley. But yet there is beauty in the midst of that harshness. And so separate yourself, separate your mind, your inner being. And as the King James Version says um, on the New King James, come into my chamber, into your chamber. And that's the most inner part of the house. It's really saying, come unto me. And if, as I just say that, I'm reminded of the scripture that says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here the Lord is offering rest our mind rest to our inner being our spirit and even rest through a uh, healing to our body the lord is saying as difficult as it is outside come to me find a secret place be deliberate come and seek me come and search for me hide yourself for a little time. You see, the greatness of God is that he controls all times and seasons. And so even in scripture, he says to everything, there is a season and a time for everything. So hard times won't always be there. There will be moments, there will be uh, times to have reprieve from that hard time. But you know something? This is the love of God. It goes deeper than even that. It goes so deep that you can be in the middle of a hard time, but yet you are at peace within. This is what is being offered today. Until the time of this hardship be passed, until the time of the struggles in this world is passed, when we can forever be with the Lord. Our hope becomes sight. Everything that we hope for in the presence of God and in the victory of God is made whole and apparent in us. We live it. But you know, Isaiah 26 verse 20 also reminds me of another scripture that is speaking about the door and the door speaks of opportunity as well. My God, I'm also reminded that the door, actually the original word, when we look in the scriptures at Ephesians, which speak Ephesians six, which speaks about the spiritual warfare. It actually speaks of the shield of faith, doesn't it? 
And actually, one of the root words for the size of the shield that the Romans used to use, one was called or one was the literal meaning of it was door. And so our faith in God opens the door of opportunity for us, the door of deliverance. The same Jesus that said to the church in Asia, I have the key to every door. What I lock, nobody else can open. And what I open, nobody else can close. And so as I've mentioned Revelation, let me turn to my final scripture, which is Revelation chapter three and verse 20. Jesus was actually saying to the churches, many times we use this scripture to be speaking uh, to those that are not believers. But actually when this word was declared, it was speaking to church in Asia. And it says, behold, I, Christ, stands at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. And so here is an opportunity that I'm even extending to those that may not know the Lord even, as well as to those of us that are in the church. We are the people of God. Even through this traumatic time, go into your inner place, Allow the Lord to meet you there and dine with him. Well, how do we dine with him? The word of God is our bread, is our food. So draw the word of God, open the word of God, sit with the Lord, read the word and let the Holy Spirit speak directly to you. A word for you concerning this time. A word for you in your situation. Come, give an opportunity right now to the Lord. I pray that these words even just inspire you to think a little further than even what I've said. And there's a greatness about the Holy Spirit that we can hear a word but he, the Holy Spirit, amplifies it within us, breaks it open. When we mutter, when we speak over the word of God, when we declare the word of God, clarity, revelation is open to us and our faith is strengthened. We understand who God is, what Jesus has done for us, and that the victory that we have in God comes through Jesus Christ. And so I want to take a moment or time just to pray with somebody. You may have a situation or a circumstance every time in our life there is something that we need to pray about. And so I want to pray right now. I want to pray. For anyone that has a need, we have a lot during this time that are, are bereaving. We have suffered loss. And we haven't really been able uh, to perhaps reflect on that in the way that we would at any other time. And it hurts that we haven't even been able to say farewell to our, our family or friend that has passed away. We haven't been able to say farewell in the way that we would do normally. But what I want to pray for today is that even in that situation, you experience the peace of God. You may be going through difficult times in your family. And it honestly takes divine intervention, as we would say, a visit from God, a move from God to change things around. I will pray for you, whether it be healing or any other situation, whether it be addictions that really just keep us in a revolving door, just going round and round. We're going to pray in Jesus name right now. And we're going to pray that the Lord shows himself 
in our situation. So bow your head with me um, and I will say a prayer for us all. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give honor to you and we thank you. We bless you for your goodness. We bless you for your grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that just a thought I was able to pass on today will germinate in someone's heart and breathe life into what may seem a dead situation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak life into situations and circumstances that seem impossible. Not my life, but your life, life that comes from you. You are, and Jesus declared as well, that he, you are the resurrection and the life. My God, you are in the business of bringing to life that which is dead. So I pray, God, in families where things may seem destroyed and there is no hope of union, there is no hope of coming together. I speak life in the name of Jesus. I declare life, my God, over those that are sick right now in the name of Jesus. Life that comes as healing to the body. I speak peace to the troubled mind, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. And deliverance, God, to anyone that is traumatized right now, in Jesus' name, to the person, my God, that is stuck in an addiction. I speak release in the name of Jesus. And mighty God, may those that experience your touch and your move as they invite you in to their chamber, as they invite you in to themselves, God, to their mind, God, as they meditate on your word, as they invite you in, Lord, be manifested in their lives. Show up for them, God, we ask in the name that is above every name the name of Jesus Christ. And so I'd ask you, even if you want to share, um, if you are blessed or moved or impact in any way by this word, and you may not know of the Lord Jesus Christ um, as proclaiming him as your Lord, we give you the opportunity to make contact with us um, on the details that he's showing on the screen now. And for anyone that's probably not seeing the screen, but hearing it's info at uh, gxn.global. Just give us a word. If you want us to continue to pray for you and your situation, drop us an email, let us know, and we will pray for you. God bless you. God strengthen you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.
don't give the referee my brother chance to send you up because at first looks it looks really bad. Second looks it's like a, a forearm, isn't it? You know when you try and hand someone yeah, off. Yeah, like in America, and it's here, here and Tini in the.